In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform the venous excess ultrasound or VEXUS, which is a POCUS technique used to quantify venous congestion. It begins with measuring the maximal diameter of the IVC based on the assumption that the IVC dilates in an elevated right atrial pressure. We place the transducer at 1 to 2 cm below the cyphoid process with the transducer orientation marker set at 3 o'clock to measure the IVC in its short axis using the lever as a window. The IVC is on the right um, within the liver tissue and the aorta in the midline being positive having a thickened wall. And then we turn to the long axis by rotating the probe in 90 degrees in a clockwise position from 3 to 12 o'clock. And this will enable visualizing the long axis of the IVC joining the right atrium and the hepatic, hepatic vein draining into the IVC. When measuring the IVC diameter, we choose a location at 2 cm below the right atrium IVC junction or 1 cm below the hepatic IVC junction. You can measure the IVC diameter uh, using B mode, but some might be more familiar using the M mode to obtain the collapsibility and the sensibility index. In VEXUS, an IVC maximal size of less or equal than 2 cm corresponds to VEXUS grade 0. However, in Asian population, a lower threshold might be necessary. So if we use a standard VEXUS technique, when we measure IVC2 and equals more than 2 cm, then we proceed to the next step. Next, we go to the hepatic vein. There are two ways to visualize the hepatic vein. First is a sub view in the same view that we captured the long axis IVC. The second is the coronal view. In the sub view, we slightly tilt the probe towards the patient's right shoulder to visualize the hepatic vein draining into the IVC. This might result in slightly less optimal view than the coronal view. So I'm going to show you um, obtaining the hepatic vein in the coronal view, which might be easier to access. In the coronal view, we place the transducer at the junction between the cyphoid process and the mid-axillary line with the orientation marker aiming towards the patient's right axilla. We can slide the probe slightly towards the patient's head to visualize the liver diaphragm interface and tilt the probe downward slightly to visualize the hepatic vein draining into the IVC. And then we can see the, the hepatic vein draining in the IVC. We can put the color floor on uh, to see the presence of the blue color, uh, which signifies the blood moving from the hepatic vein away from the transducer and into the IVC. Next, we put the pulsed wave Doppler on and place the sample volume within the hepatic vein at least one to two centimeters away from the junction of the hepatic vein and IVC. And you can sample any of the three hepatic veins based on the ease of access. You can ask the patient to hold the breath slightly at the end of expiration. For the waveform of the hepatic vein, there are two positive retrograde waves A and V and two negative antigrade waves S and D, indicating blood movement away and towards the heart respectively. Simultaneous ECG is very useful in identifying each wave. A wave corresponds to the P wave signifying RA contraction. S wave corresponds to the QRS complex. V wave occurs at the end of the systole and D wave occurs during the ventricular diastole or after the T wave with the blood flowing from the hepatic vein into the IVC back into the right atrium. And normally the amplitude of the S wave is greater than the D wave. But as the right atrial pressure increases, the amplitude of the S wave diminishes and may reverse above the waistline. As you can see in this demonstration, the S wave is equal uh, with the D wave. So this means that the patient has no congestion. Next, we move to the portal vein. We continue with the portal vein by moving the probe slightly in the caudal direction to observe the liver adjacent to the right kidney. We can fan the transducer slightly anteriorly to view the portal vein. And we can also employ the color flow to see a continuous rate flow, meaning the movement of blood towards the probe. The portal vein has slightly thicker wall than the hepatic vein. And sometimes you can see a brightened wall uh, signifying that this is a portal vein. Next, we 
uh, put the sample volume at the portal vein and we aim to um, put the sample volume at the main portal vein and not the branches. Normally, the portal vein waveform has a continuous pattern with limited pulsatility due to hepatic sinusoids that dampen the linear transmission of the right atrial pressure. We can measure pulsatility index or portal vein pulsatility fraction or PVPF by uh, my, um, subtracting Vmax and Vmin and dividing it by Vmax and then times it with 100%. And if it's less than 30, this is normal, having no congestion. If it's between 30 and 50, this means the patient has moderate congestion. And if it's more than 50%, it means that the patient has severe congestion. Sometimes we can also see the flow being reversed below the baseline, meaning that the patient might have very severe congestion. And in this picture, you can see that the Vmax is 18.63 and the Vmin is 13.66 and then we can calculate the PVPF later. Lastly, we moved to the intrarenal vein Doppler. We are aiming to visualize the renal interlobar or RQ8 veins uh, instead of main renal vein or segmental renal vein. So we want to see the interlobar veins in um, the renal cortex. We can change the preset to renal uh, for better visualization of the kidney. Um, if you don't have the renal preset, you can still use the abdomen preset. If we already see the kidney, we can adjust the depth to visualize the entire kidney. And then again, we put the color floor to visualize the blood in the kidneys and you can see that there are both blue and red signals meaning that there are both renal arterial systems mixing with the venous systems which is okay then we place the sample volume um, slightly towards the cortex and we can see both the um, renal arterial system and the interlobar vein with the renal arterial system this is above the baseline. You can visualize it um, with the corresponding cardiac cycle. With the renal vein, again, this is similar to portal vein. The normal flow is a continuous pattern with minimal pulsatility and no interruptions. With increased venous congestion, you can see increased pulsatility and interruptions of the waveform. And you can see distinct S and D wave. And if the congestion is very severe, then you might see a monophasic um, D wave be having the S wave being reversed above the baseline. Again, with simultaneous arterial waveform, you can identify the phases of cardiac cycle and the S and D wave of the interlobar veins. Combining all the gradings together from IVC, hepatic vein, portal vein, and interrenal vein, you can obtain the vexus grading, grade 0, grade 1, grade 2, and grade 3, according to this picture, thanks to the Nephropocus page. And with grade 0, there's no congestion, IVC less than 2 cm. With grade 1, the IVC is more or equal than 2 cm with any combination of normal or mildly abnormal waveforms. With grade 2, there's moderate congestion. The IVC is, again, being more or equal than 2 cm with at least one severely abnormal pattern. And with grade 3, there's severe congestion with IVC being more or equal than 2 cm with two or more severely abnormal waveforms. Thank you again for the opportunity to contribute to this podcast, and I hope you enjoy doing VEXIS.